We're not digging this out yet, but we'll probably dig this out later this year and prep it for the following year. Yeah. Maybe even plant some garlic in here in the fall. Yeah. That way next year we can harvest it. Yeah, I see this garden bed being full of medicinal herbs, such as motherwort. Potatoes. No, we already have a potato bed. <laughs> we never have too many potatoes. Ooh, it sounds like it's about to rain. Plants love it. I think my favorite part of the garden build was seeing our vision come together, seeing the old stone actually stacking it, laboring, bringing it all over here. And then once we built it, filling it with soil, and then now seeing the plants in it, like really seeing it all come together, I'm thrilled with the end result. It was a good workout, eh? Yeah, I don't think I worked out at all other than physical labor <laughs> since I've been home and I've lost weight, so it's a good sign hauling stone from one end of the property to the other, and then the crush, and then the three-quarter clear, and then the soil. Yeah, and I mean, it was only 26,000 pounds of wall stone anyway. No big deal. Not a big deal. It's only 26,000. Yeah. <laughs> I really like how you clean cut these edges. We went for the raw look for the outside of the garden, but then just having that top row really cleanly cut together is really beautiful. It, it just makes it look a little bit more professional. Don't you think? Yeah, I do. I mean, we tried it, tried doing the just dry stack together. It just didn't look finished. Yeah. And then, so we got our concrete saw out. Start cutting. I think the biggest obstacle I had to overcome to build these garden beds is just the mental buildup of actually moving all the stone. Like, you know, you start a day, you're thinking, okay, it's just me and Lisa Marie, we gotta move all this. And it's a very daunting task. And then just doing it once you start it, it's not so bad. It's so go it's, time. It's go time. So you weren't scared to test your masonry skills out? Nah, I, I've did, I started out in the construction industry and landscaping, so I felt pretty good about the masonry part. I mean, not as good as if it were like cedar and all wood, obviously it's a carpenter, mm -hmm. but uh, I was excited. I, I love the idea that this is never going to break down. Yeah. Not in our lifetime. Not in our kids' lifetime. That's true, right? Hey, go swim for some water. <laughs> I'm super happy to see how well the plants are doing. Oh, I was feeling a lot of pressure because you had done all this work to give me the perfect garden. And I thought, oh my gosh, what if I don't keep the plants alive? But they've actually been pretty self-sufficient. They really just need a lot of love, water, solar power. Well, you've also, you've been watering it, you've been giving them attention, you visit them every I night I sing to my morning. plants. I visit them minimum twice a day. I start my morning every day with a walk around the garden, the property. Truly, by the end of the day, when I do my second walk, everything looks different. The garden never looks the same twice, even the same day. There's always something to be seen or spreading up or something to learn about. The plants, they like it when you sing to them. That's an old wives' tale that I learned from a German grandmother, she told me that her plants do so well because she sings to them every day. So, neighbors, I'm sorry for ruining your morning with my voice, but I'm gonna be singing to my plants every day for the rest of my life. Neighbors, you're well lucky if you get to hear that voice. <laughs> Fly me to the moon. Take it away, baby. It's a garden, but it also has a second act as a dance floor. We'd be getting busy in the garden. Do the music. Bust the move. Alrighty, so you can see the zucchini and the zucchini flowers. I actually have a very good recipe for that. What you do is you blanch the zucchini with the flour and you can actually eat the flour too. So fun fact, zucchini and squash flowers are edible. So I have a really good recipe for that. We have some spaghetti squash going. Have a great recipe for that. I think that you guys have seen it on season two of Homes and Homes with my spaghetti squash and meatball recipe. Ooh, the kale salad. I have a really delicious recipe for that. It has onions, garlic skin, actually. That one's inspired by Sophia Rowe, so I can share that too. Then look at all this lettuce. Oh my gosh, I have a million recipes for different salads. If you are interested in getting creative with salads, I have great recipes for salads. I have a recipe for everything. <laughs> 
And under here we have our chives. Chives can go into everything. Our carrots are doing well. Carrots are just gonna pop up when they're ready. Ooh, we have some more onions down here. Lots of potato recipes. Oh my gosh, sweet potato. We have Yukon gold potato and fingerling potato. So there's a whole bunch of other recipes that we can share. Yeah, you can mash them. You can scallop them. You can boil them. Roast them. Boil them. Bake them. Eat them raw, probably. Maybe not. Bad gas. I guess. <laughs> but these are our potatoes. Can't wait to harvest them in the fall. We're gonna need a cold cellar, baby, so that we could store them throughout the winter months. Yeah, it's on the list. Our next steps, we have to finish the edging over here. I left it open just to cut the grass, get the lawnmower by, and I've got to remove all these rocks so that the lawnmower will fit in between here. Okay. Get the edging in here, get some more screening down, flagstone, and pea gravel. Alrighty, so the next steps are really about landscaping and yeah. finally creating the space that we want to be able to entertain in here. I think one day it'd be nice if we had a greenhouse tucked away in that back corner. We also have a bench that I really want to go here. So I can have my morning tea right here, sitting and watching the sunrise, since the sun rises in the east, which is that direction there over the trees. I'd also love a fence and a compost station at the back here. So we have a great little area, a tree line, where we could tuck compost back there so that, you know, while I'm weeding or if I'm taking out plants, it'd be nice to have a wash station, greenhouse. What do you think? <laughs> we'll add it to the list. <laughs>